And welcome back to the Factor on Sensor. July 13th isn't a regular day here in Houston. It's 713 Day, a special celebration of Houston music and culture. On this H-Town holiday, we're hearing from a DJ and producer who is instrumental in cultivating that oh-so-familiar Houston sound. His name is simply OG Ron C. <laughs> Your career has spanned 35 years, and you're not even 50 yet. Not yet but you man. have done so much, and I think it's almost like one of Houston's best hidden secrets. Uh, I mean, you work from everywhere, everyone from Beyonce to Drake. You're producing for Drake right now. What is that like? Um, you know, just to be a part of just the OVO when Drake first called me and asked me about it. Um, I was overwhelmed. I, I just knew he was just gonna be, you know, I knew he was gonna he was gonna be there. <laughs> so I've always believed I'm just a I'm a fighter for the independence anyway. So, you know, from starting from the bottom, like he said, you know, I've always been that advocate for, for the artists and the DJs. And you know, your it's... career started when you were 14 as what, a rapper or a DJ? Uh, well, I was actually a rapper, but let me clarify though, <laughs> I wasn't the rapper Ron C from Dallas with the, the, the truck trendsetter. I was okay. just, you know, doing as the home, you know, we just doing what we see on TV, you know, beatboxing. Hey, Hey man, it's your time to rap. You know, did I be boxing? We went to the studio, and the guy was like, "Well, where the music at?" None of us was producers. We didn't know no, we didn't know nothing about producers then. Right, we just right. doing what we saw on TV, mimicking what we saw on TV. So, we went to the studio, and the guy was like, "Where the music?" And we had no music, so he said <laughs> he pulled out a, a drum machine and showed me how to just make a simple beat. Uh -huh. I fell in love with production, and that was the beginning for you when it when it comes to DJ. And one of the things you did was you taught Paul Wall how to DJ. Yeah, uh, I actually, after Before I got- Before we knew who Paul Wall was. Yeah, after I got my skills up, I saw Paul, like his passion, like his passion. <laughs> and then, you know, just to be honest with you, his rhythm for a white guy was really good. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of like, you know, it's a good point of being a DJ. Uh -huh. So when I seen that, I was like, well, man, his passion just from wanting to learn how to, you know, be a DJ was like, okay, I'm gonna take him up under my wing, mm -hmm. and that's that's the first person I. But really you took actually. a merch further than that because when you guys started Swisher House, yeah. the record label with yeah. Michael Five Thousand Watts and others, so what led you to starting that record label? Well, I had a teen club. Um, me and my friends had a teen club. Me and my friends Smoogie and you know even T Gray. You know we was mm -hmm. all doing this teen club thing called the All Star, and then you know we would let the rappers rap at the end of the night mm -hmm. and let everybody get up there and freestyle because freestyling was a big becoming a big thing in Houston and Paul Wall become became one of the most popular guys to do it. Paul mm -hmm. Wall, Slim Thug, Lil Mario, J Dog, Big Tiger, uh, Big Pick, AD Green. So all these guys was starting to become the guys, you know what I'm saying? Crazy man, all these guys was becoming the guys. So that's how what led us to you know, okay, we started seeing some things here. And the and, rest is history. Yeah, we already had Archie Lee and Lester Roy was already, you know, there, so we had them, them five right there, and I was the MC, and Watts was the music genius, and. Incredible run, huh? Man, and, and you're still very... not done. You're still working, like I said, with artists like Drake, Beyonce, many others out there. What What's next for OG Ron C? Oh man, I'm just trying to keep up now. You know, now I, I, you know, I'm trying to keep this, you know, the DJ Screws legacy going. And mm -hmm. I just figured that, you know, when it comes down to this slow down music and who made this popular and everything, I'm not gonna let people forget that it was DJ Screw. No, everybody agrees DJ Screw wasn't the first person to slow down a record, but he was the first person to make it popular mm -hmm. and make it cool and make everybody want to do it. I started running to the youngsters that, that they started really being, they had a love 
for DJ Screw music too, and keeping it, you know, wanting to keep it alive too. So that's what made me now create, you know, have now this Chop Star. I really didn't really- And Chop Stars is a group of DJs. It's a group of DJs. I said, hey man, listen, this is what I want to do. This is what we're doing as the Chop Stars. We want to keep sure that make we keep DJ Screw's legacy alive and uphold it like this. So this is what we're going to do as a group. If we do it all as one, trust me, two fists, you know, is better than one. And so you guys recently performed at Coachella as well. Yeah, yeah. How was that for the Chop Stars and you oh, being man. right here from Houston? Uh, I think performing at like one of the biggest festivals in the world is probably any artist's um, dream come true of just, you know, big time places to perform. So, you know, performing at Coachella was definitely bucket list, mm -hmm. milestone, all that. Uh, and it was great to, you know, have my my team with me because like I'm I'm, I'm I ain't no good without my team uh -huh. so I make sure my team is always with so just for us that was that was great for us that's just and it just goes to show that listen I want really with this DJ thing I said I want young kids to know that listen see when I was being come up as a DJ this these dreams wasn't here DJs couldn't survive off of being a DJ. Mm -hmm. They couldn't make, the money wasn't there. It wasn't no DJ living a great life off of just being a DJ. Now DJs make millions of dollars. Yes, so now I won't, I, I ain't one of them. I'm just, <laughs> I, IRS don't come for the book. I'm just saying I pay my tax. Now, nah, but I'm just, you know, but I do want, you know, kids to know that, you know, now, it's anything, it ain't just come from DJing, it just comes about, if it's something that you believe in, that you are good at, you dream about, just do it. I really didn't really even know. So that's why I always say thank God for Michael Watts and <laughs> DJ Screw, because DJ Screw came and gave us a way out, and Michael Watts, you know, he the one just saw it through for me. OG Ron C. Remember that name. He has produced with many big names in the music industry. He went from being instrumental in the creation of Swisher House Records with G Dash and Michael 5000 Watts to working with Drake and even the Queen Bee herself. He's done a lot for the music industry, but he also wants to be remembered for his philanthropy. And now that you've made it, and you're still continuing your legacy, what's next for OG Ron C? I, I want to do now is my charity work. Like I'm real homelessness is really some close to my mm -hmm. close to my heart because of my uncle. You know, I lost an uncle as a homeless man. You know, he was homeless. He you know died homeless. So homelessness becomes something you know close to my heart. So and and as you know, me and you share with our you know with our foundations type of things. Like we like to give back and help people. Mm -hmm. It's like you, I like to thank you because you also kept encourage me about my slides. You know, everybody always get on me. Oh, gee, you wear slides, guy. You know what I'm you know, you I know was what? there the first day you gave your shoes away to a homeless guy. Yeah, man. And thank then you. you transitioned into slides. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Because you know, this is what I want to do. Like with the slides, I want to have. I just started joking around with three of my friends. Uh, you know, three of you know our, our mutual friends that we have. You know, and. Um, we decided about the slide fest. I said, man, you know what? I ought to make a festival where you can only get into the festival with slides on. Uh -huh. And I just kept joking about it. And then my friends, they said, that's a good idea. So what I was going to do at first was just give the slides away mm -hmm. in exchange for your shoes. And right. I was going to take your shoes and give them to the homeless people. I said, let's, let's stop that. It's the time out for giving homeless people our hand-me-down things. Let's give them something actually real that they can open up and get something brand new. Mm -hmm. So I created a shoe. I designed my own shoe. It's an OG shoe. And it has an OG with an arrow pointing up because after you get that shoe, it's, it's, it's up from here. Yeah. This is up for me. Ain't no more feeling. <laughs> this shoe is gonna make you feel some type of way. So that's what the next thing is for me. Just you know, my charity and just you know, going on to try to make do my part and with this homelessness thing and try to use what my brand and what God blessed me with. That's just it. Right. Now, we're gonna keep watching your work. Man, good thank seeing you, OG. Thank you so much, Isaiah. All right. And that slide fest is scheduled for September 4th right here in Houston. So look for more details.